Out of all the factory tours we've done, until today, we'd never gotten an opportunity to see how water blocks and open loop cooling components like fittings are made. We've seen skiving for closed loop liquid coolers before, as used for cold plates and AIOs, and the rest of the closed loop construction at Cooler Master and Deep Cool factories, but not open loop components. Open loop has a lot more steps involved, as most of the closed loop parts are sourced from third parties and assembled rather than made on site. Bitspower gave us a factory tour of its facility in Changhua, Taiwan to see how open loop parts are made. Today, we'll see CNC machines at work making water blocks, fittings, acrylic housing, polyoxymethylene thermoplastic parts, and more. In a separate R&D tour video in the future, we'll also show how water blocks are designed and checked for quality and sizing. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. We've been to cooler and case manufacturing facilities before that use some of the same machines used at Bitspower, but we haven't had a chance to learn the in-depth details of how our water block and fittings are made for open loop parts. If you want to catch up on our other 20 factory tour videos, check the playlist linked in the description below. Remember that the process explained in this video is in some ways specific to bits power, but it's mostly the same as how all water cooling parts are made for open loop, so it applies to other brands as well, just with different sizes for the factories. Bits power has grown a lot over the last few years and now does its biggest business in the US and in China. Some of the company's biggest customers include CyberPower, whose CES demo systems we saw this year used bits power parts, and Microcenter, which moves a lot of DIY parts. Bits Power's factory is located in a relatively small town in Taiwan with a population of about 230,000, but a neighbor is Taichung with 2.8 million people. The factory is the first that we've been to out of the Taipei area, and it's accessible by high-speed rail about an hour out. It's a huge change of scenery from the more industrial areas of Taipei and Taoyuan, but it's still a factory, and you'll see that everything's functioned first at this location. Bits Power manufactures the vast majority of its parts in Taiwan, with the remainder being made in China. Like anyone else, Bitspower hires other factories to do specialized work, most also in Taiwan, like electroplating for nickel finishes, which is done nearby. We have another factory tour of an electroplating facility coming up soon, but we can show some teaser footage here. Bitspower also buys from suppliers for its tubing, like its coated copper tubing, but makes the rest of its parts in a factory that it owns. The first step of the factory is to receive aluminum and copper raw materials from a supplier. Bitspower and its supplier have a synergistic relationship involving materials recycling that we'll talk about more later. The raw materials are dropped off in the form of rods and stored near the factory entrance. Rods are commonly circular or square at this factory, and when we asked what the significance was between the two sizes, the factory told us that the square rods are faster to cut for certain types of component designs. The circular rods also have knurling pre-cut into the surface, which will later be used for grip on fitting pieces that might need to be screwed in by hand. Bits Power runs three shifts to complete 10,000 fittings per day on average, making its modest factory one of the most efficient that we've been to. The company only needs about eight to 10 engineers and trained technicians to run its machines, as the work is primarily automated and requires skilled workers to program the machines and keep them running. The rods are taken off of the trays at the entrance and brought to the first machines. Aside from programming and maintenance, this is one of the few manual steps in the process, just physically moving the material. Workers load the aluminum or copper rods into the machine a couple at a time, typically three to five stacked, and the machine can then operate mostly unsupervised for the next one to two days. As the bars are depleted, a blue LED bar progresses down the machine, and then a new bar is automatically dropped into the chamber. Each bar is worth about 400 fittings, and each machine can go through about eight bars per day if it's running at complete full operation, although they don't typically. The bar is pushed down the chamber as it's cut on the other end, where it enters the machine for more work, the machine normally dumps oil on the tools to keep them all cool, and it contains a tank of two gallons, requiring a refill once per week due to gradual loss from spatter of the oil. The engineer here disabled the oil momentarily and stuck a high-powered compressed air gun into the machine to cool it well enough for us to film without all of the oil in the way, which we obviously appreciate, but normally you'd see these things completely coated in oil. 
The tools are stationary bits fixed in a specific location, with each location programmed for specific fittings. Right angled fittings take the longest time to make and require more expensive machining, which can process a fitting from two sides, while the simpler soft tubing fittings can use a cheaper machine that only processes the fitting from one side. This larger CNC has a total of nine tool slots with six to eight required on average for each fitting, depending on the product. The bar is cut into a smaller chunk at this point and then moved internally from tool to tool and spun against the bit. Once one side is done, it's handed off to another piece within the machine and run against the tools in the opposing direction, used for machining both sides of a fitting. Once all the machining work is done, the fitting is spat into a short conveyor belt and dropped into a bin to await technician inspection. Each piece is placed in a drainer for the oil to drip off and then is inspected for quality control. Out of every million pieces or so, the defect rate is about 0.3% at this stage in the pipeline, making this one of the most accurate processes we've seen yet. As for when there are defects, they're typically caused by the bits slowly going bad, which is a natural byproduct of a whirling bar of hot metal getting pressed into drill bits constantly. During manufacturing, technicians check the bits every 20 minutes or so, mostly to ensure that something isn't horribly wrong with the programming or that the tools haven't been destroyed over time. The most common failure is from tool aging, which is only countered with diligence and early replacement of failing bits, especially since they don't age at the same pace. Quality checks include inner diameter checks with digital or analog meters and thread checks to ensure the fitting secures flush to the test plate. Once a technician suspects that the tool might be going bad, they'll begin checking for the fittings every 10 minutes until it's no longer tenable for manufacturing. As for the manufacturing variants, Variation unit to unit in any single dimension is less than 0.01 millimeters, but this is also checked in another process with separate tools later that we'll talk about in our R&D tour. All of the copper and aluminum scraps from the fittings are dumped by the machine into a large bin and later bagged. Bits Power takes the bag full of copper shavings and places it in a whirling dryer that rests atop a massive truck tire. Although it looks homemade, this is actually a pretty standard machine that we've seen a few times now, and it's used for drying small parts in manufacturing. The tire makes for a great natural shock absorber that copes well with the high speed of the dryer. And the metal supplier has, again, a synergistic relationship with Bits Power, wherein Bits Power can return the excess material as recyclables to the supplier in exchange for a rebate on its next order. This dryer is important though. It's used to forcefully remove the oil from the components because the metal supplier values the material at a lower rate if it's soaked in oil, because the rates are based on weight, and oil obviously adds valueless weight. Almost all of the unused material can be recycled via a foundry that melts it down and processes new copper bars, completing the circle on the next delivery. As for the value, the current rate, with these factories at least, is about $4 USD per kilogram of copper waste for bits power. The company produces somewhere around 400 to 500 kilograms of waste per day, and each of the massive bags weighs, we think, about a thousand kilograms, although the translation here was uncertain. Unfortunately, waste from acrylic and palm manufacturing is unusable, and so is sent off to a waste management company for processing into a landfill. That concludes the making of the fittings, but Bits Power also makes acrylic, thermoplastic, and other copper products in this same facility, so we can move on to those next. Manufacturing time is always the biggest cost that's hidden to consumers. Factories price products based on raw materials and bomb, obviously, but also price them based on how long each product takes to make. As an example, it takes Bits Power about two to three hours to make just the copper base for its liquid nitrogen pot, which is a complicated cut that uses dense copper, requiring a lot of time to machine it down, and also the complicated patterns make it take longer. That's two to three hours for a single unit, and Bits Power has eight of the larger CNC machines so that tie up a significant portion of its production capabilities for any type of block for the entire period that this Allen 2 pot's being made. For perspective, it takes the company about 11 minutes to machine just one acrylic piece for its water blocks, which is still a long time, and it takes about 25 minutes for a copper cold plate to be machined from start to finish for a CPU. In the time that Bits Power makes one Allen 2 pot base, it can make five to seven CPU cooler cold plates multiplied against the accommodation of one machine for three cold plates each, bringing the total for one machine in two to three hours to 15 to 21 units versus the one Allen 2 pot. That's why things cost what they do, aside from the given material pricing. Bits Power tells us that the biggest cost, unsurprisingly, is factory floor space. 
Unless the company buys more land and builds another factory, it can't simply add more machines to increase its production capabilities. The copper for cold plates is provided in a solid brick, pre-cut by the supplier. We asked why they don't cut the copper from larger sheets instead, and Bitspower told us that although it'd be cheaper in one sense, it'd cost tremendously more in that factory floor space requirement, and it'd have to get rid of other machines to accommodate the idea, so it makes more sense to buy it from a supplier. Before proceeding, the copper brick has its sharp edges cleaned off with a hand tool if necessary. The copper brick is next socketed into a metal carrier and secured in place. It's then mounted in the machine. Doing it this way ensures that the coordinates always match the programming. The CNC works in steps, so the first is to cut the excess copper out and create the shape of the cold plate, followed by three more steps for shaping the cold plate channels, the micro fins, and for polishing. The machine can fit three cold plates at a time, for CPUs anyway, or four terminals at a time. BitsPower tries to min-max how many units it makes from each step, so that machines only need to be programmed once per step per order, but it depends on how quickly the parts have to be made. Terminals are more complicated than might be thought. BitsPower technicians have to manually flip the terminals four times so that they can reach each angle, so they have to be rotated throughout the process and take more hands-on oversight than some other components would. As for acrylic and palm, that's fairly hands-off, depending on the part. BitsPower makes acrylic and palm covers for its water blocks, acrylic distribution plates for NZXT and CyberPower cases, GPU block covers, and also makes some of its reservoirs in the CNC machines. One of the super fat walled reservoirs that we saw is also made in this facility. They bring in the raw material and then place it in the largest of the CNC machines that's available in the factory. If you're wondering what it costs to make open loop parts, ignoring the land cost, the time, the R&D costs, it, and everything else associated with running a business, it's still high. Each of the larger CNC chambers, which are needed for big parts like reservoirs, costs 3 million NTD each, or about 99,540 USD. The smaller of the two chambers costs 2.5 million NTD, or about 82,950 USD. There's also millions of USD tied up in land, time, employee, R&D, and material costs as well, so it's expensive to make a water block. After all this, the parts are packaged and driven a few miles down the road to BitsPower HQ, where they're packaged again for retail and prepared for shipment with manual labor. During this process, BitsPower does more quality control steps, mostly visual inspection for scratches, and then packages the parts with accessories for shipment. We'll have a separate video on BitsPower's process for researching and developing new water cooling products, so subscribe for that. Remember that it's similar across the industry, so knowing how BitsPower does it will give you a better understanding for how basically everyone making water cooling parts approaches their product manufacturing and design. Subscribe for more as always, we have a lot more factory tours coming up. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, and we'll see you all next time.